As you may or may not know, my wife and I just got back from Vegas. It was a great trip. We ate, we drank, we had a blast. But then we got home and looked at the credit card, and uh, I gotta say, it doesn't matter how much fun you're having, 25 bucks for a drink is a ripoff. Frickin' Vegas. I hate getting ripped off, and so do the lads over at Harry's. They spent years watching the razor blade companies rip people off and said, No more! Not all heroes wear capes, my friends, and they want to prove that they're legit by offering you hot dogs a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. I've been telling you about them for months, and I'm genuinely proud to have Harry's as a sponsor of this show. I wasn't kidding. The plastic, futuristic-looking crap razors you get at the store are overpriced, and they're poor quality. Harry's blades are crisp, clean, and classy. They're the kind of razor you'd expect your grandpa to have on his bathroom counter. And most importantly, they work. Shave after shave, they're so smooth, they're precise. I used to go through the crappy store blades all the time, but Harry's are built to last. And they're not just better quality than the other names, they're more affordable. And they deliver. Just set your schedule, and for as little as two bucks, new blades, shaving creams, lotions, everything you need, right to your door when you need it. I genuinely cannot think of a reason not to try Harry's. And I'm not just saying this because they're sponsors. They're the best shaving supplies I've ever used. Try them out. And if you're not happy, your shave's on them. And unlike the other subscriptions, they're really easy to cancel if you want to, too, which is a nice bonus, but... Believe me, you're, you're not going to want to cancel. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Remember the Game. It is my retro gaming podcast where every week a buddy of mine and I sit down and we geek out about the games we played back in the day. My name is Adam Blank. Thank you so much for listening to the show. This week it is episode 99 and in tribute to the great one, Wayne Gretzky, I'm going to embrace my proud Canadian heritage, talk a little hockey. We are talking NHL Stanley Cup. For the Super Nintendo, also known as Super Hockey in Europe, apparently, uh, which I like. I like that name. Just no NHL at all, just Super Hockey. Uh, listen, this game sucks more than it should, and a lot of the people I knew uh, when I was growing up had it. I had it. Uh, my buddy Brad is back on the show this week. We had a great time laughing about crappy old sports games, making fun of them, making fun of each other. Even if you're not super into NHL Stanley Cup, I think you might enjoy this episode. Just, uh, I don't know, maybe not. I don't know. It's uh, I, I, We'll see. Uh, so that's coming up in a few minutes. Before I get into that, a little bit of house cleaning. As you guys know, if you're not interested, look in the description box. It'll tell you what to skip to to just hear us talk NHL Stanley Cup. Uh, this week is your last chance to enter to win our Nintendo Switch Lite. We are giving it away with episode 100 next week. Um, and listen, I know, I never enter these either. I listen to podcasts where they're doing giveaways or YouTube channels are doing giveaways, and I never bother entering because I'm like, well, I'm never going to fucking win that anyway. But listen, it's free. It's really fast. It's really easy. I'm not going to keep your email. I'm not going to sell it to anybody. I'm not going to fuck with it. I don't know how to do I'm not smart enough to hurt you with your email address. It's completely free, and you have a chance to win a fucking Switch Lite. I mean, come on. So if you want to enter for free, all you got to do, send an email to memberthegame at gmail.com. Email is in the description with your name and the answer to this Remember the Game trivia question, what is my favorite video game of all time? Here's a hint. It is the only game in the history of the show to get a perfect score, 10 out of 10. Uh, the deadline is June 8th. I will be filming the giveaway video on June 9th, and I will be announcing the winner on the podcast on June 10th while I post the video probably at the same time. So uh, you can enter completely for free if you want to do it like that. Deadline is June 8th. Please get in. We've got quite a few entries already, but it's free. It doesn't hurt you to enter. 
I'm not going to fuck with you. I promise. I just want to make sure somebody that deserves it and wants it wins this switch. Uh, com- conversely, if you want to enter without having to send me an email, you can uh, support us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash remember the game. It is only two bucks a month. You get automatically entered into the draw. You're going to get the ability to suggest games for and vote in our monthly game poll because every month our Patreons pick one of the games we're going to cover. This month's poll is live until Monday. And the, the options are Final Fantasy for the NES, Contra 3 for the Super Nintendo, Tomb Raider for the PlayStation 1, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas for everything, uh, Sonic Spinball for the Sega Genesis, and Metal Gear Solid 3. One of those games is going to win the poll. It's pretty close right now between three of them. So if you want to get in on that, be able to suggest games, do all that stuff, you'll also get access to our weekly Patreon-exclusive show, Expansion Pass, that goes live every Sunday. This week's episode, I think I'm going to talk about Save States. And the state of retro gaming in the modern era, is it cheating? Is it wrong to use stuff like that? And just, I don't know, just basic stuff like, I'm just going to, it's like a blog. It's like a it's like a 40-ish minute uh, verbal blog from me. So that's what I'm going to touch on this week. We have over 25 episodes over there waiting for you. And you get a shout out on the show, all that for just two bucks a month, which is like 50 cents a week, patreon.com slash remember the game. I would like to thank, we had a ton of new supporters in the last week or two. So a massive shout out to a bunch of our Patreon supporters. I've now started calling them the remember the game industries board of directors. So massive thank you to our new supporters, Fraser Burns, Brian McKay, the Bevins girls, the Matthews kids, the Urem CEO, Urem CEO, sorry if I said that wrong, boys, Lane Orr, Andre, Andrew Castro, Andrew Halepchuk, Andrew Wright, the Andrew Twins, plus Andy Baker, who I assume Andy is short for an Andrew, but maybe not, Aiden Irvin, Ben Drinkin, Ben Bolu, Fro- Bullfrog, Charlie M., Chris Fleury, Jin and Chris, Corey, and Dave. Thank you all so much for supporting the show, you guys. I really, really appreciate it. There's your Patreon plug. There's your giveaway plug. All that good stuff is done. Uh, yeah, and finally, uh, we are running a listener's poll right now on our website. It's completely free. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to put in your name. You just go to rememberthegamepodcast.com and click the answers. It takes like 15 seconds. And I'm trying to shape the future of the show and make it better for you guys. I'm really interested in your feedback. I promise you don't have to enter anything. It's as quick and painless as it gets. Just do it while you're sitting on the toilet or something. I'm asking stuff like, do you guys want us to revisit some of the classics we burned in the early days before we knew what we were doing? Stuff like Super Mario World, Link to the Past, Final Final Fantasy 6, Final Fantasy, excuse me, Final Fantasy 7, GoldenEye, stuff like that. Uh, do you guys want more conversational podcasts like Sega versus Nintendo? Do we want a Nintendo 64 classic? Things like that. Do you guys want PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 games to start being introduced into the show more often? Lots, just a very valuable feedback. If you could please take the time to do it, remember the game podcast.com. You don't have to sign up for anything, I promise. It's quick and painless. There you go. There's all my plugs done. Thank you. Let's get into the news. Then we'll talk NHL Stanley Cup. Uh, To me, the biggest news this week is that Sony had announced that the PlayStation 5 reveal event was scheduled for June 4th and then canceled it based on what's going on in the world right now, uh, which I wholeheartedly agree with. I agree with that decision. Excuse me. It's disappointing to gamers, obviously. Um... But the world matters a lot more than a new gaming console does. I was obviously incredibly excited to see a PlayStation 5 reveal. I know a lot of you guys were as well. But let's put the world ahead of a new video game. Um, The thing is, like, listen, I can sympathize a little bit with Microsoft and Sony. And I'm not trying to say, like, oh, these poor billionaire, billion-dollar companies compared to the you know, the, the, what's going on in the world today. But, uh, I can sympathize with them from a business perspective and from the sense of like, instead of just being able to revealing the series X and the PlayStation five and building hype and let's go and E3 and big events and blah, 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 blah. We all get excited for like 12 months. Uh, the world's on fire and they've sunk a lot of money and a lot of years of development into these systems. And it can't be easy trying to roll them out right now. It's, they're really navigating, um, um, uh, political minefield for lack of a better I'm not smart enough to say this intellectually but you guys know what I'm trying to say um, and it's really too bad that they can't just get on the same page and delay both of these systems to 2021 till next year I think that makes the most sense by a mile people will be back to work hopefully we'll all be getting along and the world will be in a better place at that point um, but if one of them does it and the other one doesn't do it then the one that delays is completely fucked. And so like it's two juggernauts staring at each other and they both know they're that this is not going well, but neither one can can say, hey, listen, let's just wait. Like they can't, you know what I mean? Uh, it's a tough spot, right? And delaying them, is, like delaying the info is the right call. 
It's that simple. Delaying that PS5 press conference is the right call. Focus on the real world issues right now before you worry about new video games, okay? We all get it. They'll come when they're ready. It's fine. Uh, You know what? Like a lot of us get like little kids when a new system is coming out. And I don't mean just like us listeners, but like people in the video game universe on reddit on social media when you go on the message boards on podcasts everything like everyone that's really passionate about video games like a lot of us are they get so excited for these new systems and it doesn't matter how much information you get you just want more 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 right you're just like any little fucking tidbit of information that you can get we still have the ps4 we still have an xbox one we still have switches to play there's still tons of games there's still a bunch of great games coming out just in the next few months so let's all just relax Catch up on your backlog, stay safe, and just enjoy this this generation swan song because there's some great things coming up to finish this this generation off, right? I know personally, just in the next few months, I plan on playing or at least looking into playing Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, Cyberpunk 2077, Gears Tactics, Paper Mario, PGA 2K21, and the Tony Hawk remasters already. And that's just what I'm looking forward to playing over the next three to four months. Who knows what's going to be here between now and Christmas? So... It's exciting times, okay? Just like fucking, I know we're all like in a hurry to get a hold of these new generation systems, but like let's show them respect to the gen that's going on right now and just finish them off. And like I mentioned last week, if you haven't picked up one of the two systems, now's a great time to do it because they're cheap. Games are going to be going on sale. Catch up, you know? It's fucking, ah, so many games. Um, Speaking of reveals and the PS5 reveal in June 4th, and it all kind of ties together, a journalist in Japan who respectfully, I'm not even going to attempt to say your name, sir, because I will fuck it up. Uh, has announced that there's a huge story involving Sega dropping on June 4th. He's dropping it. He's like breaking it, I guess. Um, The general consensus online is this dude is incredibly credible. Uh, Incredibly credible. Uh, That sounded funny. A lot of the stories he's put out in the past have been legit. He doesn't seem to overhype his stories very often, people are saying, and he's really hyping the story up. Like he's saying the story he's going to leak on the 4th is as big as the original PlayStation 5 reveal. Um, and that's big news. And there's a ton of rumors, like a ton of rumors floating around, right? Like he's already said it's not the Dreamcast 2, which makes sense because we, the last thing the fucking gaming world needs is another console right now. Ask Google Stadia how trying to compete right now is, is working for them. We don't need that. Uh, but the rumors that I've seen online include a Dreamcast Mini, maybe a Sega Saturn Mini, an online Sega subscription similar to Game Pass on Xbox where you get all the Sega games and you can just play them all whenever you want. That could be on every system. There's rumors of a new Sonic game. The big rumor floating around is that Sega and Microsoft have teamed up and Microsoft's putting Sega in charge of the distribution of the Xbox in Japan. Uh, and just for the record, I have no connections I, I haven't talked to anybody. I am clueless as you guys. It's just what I've seen online, what I've read in articles, stuff like that. Um, the problem with comparing it to the PlayStation 5 reveal is that that sets the bar very, very, very high. And frankly, a lot of those things wouldn't live up to it, right? Like a Dreamcast Mini, a Sega Saturn Mini would be cool, but they wouldn't live up to the, that kind of hype. A new Sa- a new Sonic game would be whatever. Uh, a Sega online channel would be cool, but I don't think that lives up to that hype either. Like To me, the only rumor I've seen that really lives up to the expectations is something about Xbox and Sega teaming up. Uh, I think it'd be cool. And it kind of makes sense because if you didn't know, uh, Microsoft and the Xbox have never been successful in Japan at all. They're, they're practically non-existent over there. And, uh, Microsoft has got to be looking at the Japanese marketplace, gaming marketplace and thinking like that is a massive piece of the gaming pie that we're not even touching right now. And what better way to get into it, but with Sega, who still has a great reputation and a great foothold in the Japanese marketplace. So it kind of makes sense. Sega still spins a huge hammer over there. Microsoft needs to get in. I can't imagine Microsoft putting Sega in charge of distributing the Xbox over there. But I hope that they're doing something together because I I would love to see the two of them working together. Um, You have to remember, too, that the the story is also planned to leak on June 4th, which was originally when we were going to see PS5 news. So was it leaked to this reporter with the caveat, hey, drop it on June 4th to try to steal some thunder from whatever Sony's got going on. And now Sony's not doing their event anymore. So I don't know if we're still going to get the Sega story. I assume we probably are. Um, I have no idea what it is i have no idea i'm a little skeptical of the fact that none of the big players here in north america like GameSpot, ign kotaku have really been talking about it or picking it up uh to me if it was like that big of news they'd be saying something but maybe they just don't know what it is either and they don't want to end up with egg on their face maybe that's all it is i hope it's something big i hope it lives up to the news 
Personally, I guess my first thought would be I'd like to see Xbox sign Sega as an exclusive and put all the Sega games on Xbox and on Game Pass because I, I love Xbox and Game Pass. But uh, I would also, I wouldn't live up to the hype, but I would love a Dreamcast Mini or a Sega Saturn Mini just to try it. I think that'd be a really rad thing. I just, there's no way you hype up this is as big as the PlayStation 5 and then it's a Sega Saturn Mini. I can't imagine. So, so we'll see. We'll see what happens on June 4th. I'm excited. I hope you guys are paying attention. See what it is. We can all be excited for it together. Uh, and then the last piece of news I wanted to touch on before I get into what I've been playing is Minecraft. Um, I listen to a few gaming podcasts. Oh yeah, by the way, I posted about it on Twitter the other day. I'm looking for a good Nintendo podcast, like a, a weekly news information podcast. Because for Xbox, I listen to Podcast Unlocked, which is IGN's Xbox podcast. I think it's very good, hosted by Ryan McCafferty. For PlayStation news, I usually listen to Sacred Symbols, which is Colin Moriarty over at Colin's Last Stands podcast. The guy knows what he's talking about. I've listened to him for a very long time. But for Nintendo, like I've been listening to IGN's Nintendo Voice Chat podcast, and I used to really like it. When Jose Otero hosted it, it was great. But I really feel like the quality of the news and stuff has really fallen off. And it's more them just joking around now. And I know as I say that, I'm rambling in a podcast that's supposed to be about an old video game. But you guys know what I'm trying to say. It's just like, yeah, just, yeah. So I'm, I'm curious. If you have a good idea, if you if you have a good Nintendo podcast you listen to, shoot it to me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Member the Game. Let me know. Um, I've considered starting one, but I just, I just, I don't know. This takes a lot of my time. And when comedy gets going again, we'll see. I don't know if it's something I could keep up with. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is I was listening to Sacred Symbols, Colin Moriarty's PlayStation podcast, and he mentioned that Minecraft recently topped 200 million copies sold that's fucking insane so i looked up the best-selling games ever just to get an idea of the context you guys want to know what the three best-selling video games of all time is number one is tetris technically it's got over 500 million copies sold but you gotta remember tetris has been around since like the 80s or 70s maybe it's on everything it's on mobile like there's 100 million copies of the phone game alone have sold right it's been on every console so it counts and it's number one but you gotta remember it's been everywhere so after 500 million copies of Tetris, you know what the second best-selling video game of all time is? Minecraft. 200 million copies. Number three, to put it into perspective for you, is Grand Theft Auto V at 130 million copies. So Grand, or so Minecraft has sold 70 million copies more than Grand Theft Auto V. And I know Minecraft is also on fucking everything now. I get it. You know, Grand Theft Auto V isn't on phones or iPads or the Switch. Totally understand that. And if it was, maybe it would make up those 70 million um, sales. I get it. But I'm not, that's that's beside the point. The point is, Minecraft is a fucking phenomenon, you guys. And I know not everybody likes it. I do. I think Minecraft is fantastic. But like, that's insane. I remember when Microsoft bought Mojang Studios, which is the company that created Minecraft, and they bought them for like two and a half billion dollars, B, billion dollars or something. And I remember thinking like, holy fuck, that's insane. Two and a half billion dollars. It seems like a discount now when you think about how many copies of Minecraft they've sold and then factor in now you've got Minecraft Dungeons. Eventually a Minecraft 2 is coming, I have no doubt. And then you throw in all of the different toys and t-shirts and merchandise and stuff. It's Minecraft is one of the biggest video games of all time. All time, whether you like it or not, the bottom line is it belongs on a list with the Marios and the Tetrises and the Zeldas and the Grand Theft Autos and just the all-time greats. Minecraft is right there with it. I just, I could not believe 200 million copies of that game is sold. I've been jonesing to get back to it lately. Uh, I swore I would never play it again. I'm a recovering addict from the show, big MLB The Show and Minecraft. But like it's on Game Pass, so it's sitting there on my Xbox just smiling at me, that little blocky head of his, and I'm like... It's just like the most calming game. And it's one of the games I can play when I'm stoned and I can just relax and just build. It's just virtual Lego. It's so calming. I think if I was going to play it though, again, I would get it on Switch as opposed to playing it on my Xbox. It's just, it to me, Vita is where I really fell in love with Minecraft. It's perfect on a handheld device where you can play it while you're watching TV or something. So Minecraft is the shit. Congratulations, 200 million copies. That's insane. Anyway. That's enough of the news. What have I been playing? Then we'll get into NHL Stanley Cup. Uh, I have not been playing that much. A little bit less this last week. It's been beautiful, the weather here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. So I've been going for a lot of bike rides. I've been sitting outside on my deck reading and drinking beer. And just, I. Uh, it's it's been nice. Like I don't know if people that live somewhere where it's nice all year appreciate weather like this as much as people that live in northern Canada where we suffer through minus 40 
for a few months. And whether you go by Celsius or Fahrenheit with your temperature, minus 40 is minus 40 and it fucking sucks. So like when it's plus 20, plus 30 outside, we're going fucking outside. I don't know how hot that is in Fahrenheit. I think that's like 90s. Uh, but it's been perfect. So anyway, but I have been playing a little bit. Uh, I, I fired up Yakuza zero on my Xbox with game pass. Uh, I like it. I can't decide how much I like it. It's very story driven. Uh, if you don't know the Yakuza, I hope I'm saying that right. is like the Japanese mafia. So it's almost like GTA in a little bit of a way, but not so much driving, just open world running around being a mafia guy, beating people up. Um, I, I adore Japan as much as I love Canada. Like I adore uh, Japan, everything about it. And, uh, I also really enjoy mafia stuff. So like, it should be right up my alley. I'm just not quite sure about it yet. The combat's pretty shitty. I'm not sure yet, but I'm going to keep playing with it for now. Um, I also really struggle with open world games. Like, I mean, I've never played most of the Grand Theft Autos. I've never played a Red Dead. I get overwhelmed and on, I'm trying to get better with that. I don't have to do everything, just play the game. But I don't know if anyone else struggles with open worldness like I do in a video game. I like my linearity. Just tell me where to go. I don't need to be a free thinker. Just fucking tell me how to get there. Um, I've also been playing Streets of Rage 4 still. I love that game so much. I reviewed it on Expansion Pass last week, uh, our, the, the podcast. It was, it's great fun. I really like it. I've been plugging away at Medieval on my PlayStation a little bit. It was the runner-up in last month's Patreon poll, and uh, I was really interested in it, so I decided to start it. It's okay. Uh, I got to put some more time into it. And then I've been playing Mega Man X because I've been recording another episode of my Let's Play series. So I've been playing Mega Man X on my Super Nintendo Classic. I fucking love that game. And that's good enough. That's what I've been playing and reading and thinking about outside and the PlayStation 5 and everything else. Let's get into NHL Stanley Cup, episode 99 of Remember the Game. I know sports games aren't everybody's cup of tea on this show, but really few games are everybody's cup of tea. I try to play to all genres. I've done a lot of RPGs. I try to do the sports games when I can. I'm trying to give everybody a little bit of everything. And here's the thing. This was a really shitty alternative to the early EA NHL games, like NHL 94, 95, blah, blah, blah blah. Uh, but everyone I know owned it. We all liked it now or liked it then, but we all know it sucks now. Um, if you've ever been in a retro gaming store, you've seen NHL Stanley cup. It's sitting in the discount bin for like 10 cents. Uh, but I think we made this episode really entertaining. One of my best friends, Brad Warren is back on the show this week. We made fun of each other. We made fun of the game. It's fucking hilarious. I am going to, I think there's only one song in this. uh, I haven't actually looked up the music for the podcast yet, but I think there's only one song. So I'm going to cue some music. It's probably the same music from the beginning of the show. And Brad and I are going to talk NHL Stanley Cup, which originally released in North America on the Super Nintendo in November of 1993. Kick back, relax, wash your hands, clean your controllers, look out for giant hornets, fucking be nice to each other. And let's talk NHL Stanley Cup. Here we go. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Everyone that listens to this podcast knows about our illustrious CEO, my dog Molly. But the other silent partner behind the scenes is my wife. And let me tell you, my friends, a 17-year relationship with another person that has to talk to and live with you is a lot harder to maintain than one with a dog. We've had our ups and downs, and as you all know, a relationship isn't all sunshine and rainbows. They can be a lot of work. You get out what you put in when it comes to relationships, and talking to a therapist can be a fantastic way to put in some work they can help you work through your issues learn to communicate better and even just provide you with an ear to bend when you need it i've talked to my therapist about my relationships especially when it came to my stand-up comedy career and how much i was away from home and they helped me work on ways to keep my relationships strong even when i was out on the road uh, it turned out our relationship was actually better when I was out on the road, but that's that's a story for another day. And I know, right? Therapy. Who has the time these days? BetterHelp hears you, and they're making it easy. Fill out a quick form online, and they'll match you up with a therapist that suits your needs, and that'll work around your schedule. You pick the meet times, and you can get your therapy fix from anywhere, over video, phone, or just chat. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit BetterHelp.com slash RememberTheGame today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RememberTheGame. Yo, 
joining me via the telephone device uh, once again. This is going to be the new norm for the show, I think. Partially because of the way society is right now. Partially because I just don't want any of you guys in my fucking house. Uh, is longtime buddy of mine and returning to the show, Mr. Brad Warren. How's it going, buddy? Good, man. Just living in the uh, COVID bunker and <laughs> living life and just, ready to uh, discuss this so-called... Uh, hockey game but we'll get into that we'll get into that so okay so here's what okay i was about to say this to you before i hit record on the thing and i was like no what i'm gonna save it for the show when you and i started talking about covering nhl stanley cup i was like duh this game fucking sucks and we're gonna come on here and be like what a shitty game and we're gonna laugh at it and i'm not gonna sit here and say it's good because it's not good but like listen dude i was watching some youtube about it and stuff this morning just kind of refreshing in my mind um i <laughs> I don't hate this game. I'm not saying it's okay. good. Well, all right. Here we go. I'm not <laughs> saying it's good. I'm not saying that at all. But I have so I, many memories of playing this game. Like, I'll so many. This. I went into the same thing as you did in the sense of going, I remember this piece of shit game. But, partially, I will not agree with you that it's good. There's just so much here that... It was, it, I don't want to say it was ahead of its time, but it had, it had some stuff. Okay. That's the thing is like, I do feel like it is a little ahead of its time. So just like, yeah, it, it, like it's, it, it's got some ideas there and it, it's got some things that when you, when you go through the game modes and stuff, you're like, Oh, that, that, that they didn't have that in the other game. No. Okay. In, and you got to remember, so this game came out in 93. So yeah. like I if I'm not mistaken and I may be if I'm not mistaken it came out prior to NHL 94 cuz I feel like NHL 90 like everybody loved one of Ice Hockey or Blades of Steel. Everybody likes one of them. If you like both like me that's rad, but everybody likes at least one of them. Right. And then and then hockey kind of when it transitioned into the 16 bit, I'm just looking up the release date of NHL 94 to see NHL 94 was the golden standard. Like that was the one. Okay. So right. NH NHL 94 came out October 93 and Stanley cup came out in November of 93. So it came out right after NHL 94. And if you compare those two, then yes, NHL Stanley cup fucking sucks. It sucks. Well, and you know what? I, I, when I was looking this up, they actually released four hockey games that year, including Brett Hall hockey, which I, I owned that game. Oh, God. It sucked. Well, it, it sucked. Okay, where did your parents buy games? Okay, can now that, okay, I was thinking about this today because, like, I, dude, I don't think I knew anybody. I think my friend Joe had one of the NHL games for his Sega Genesis. But every other person that I hung out with, nobody owned one of the, like, the EA NHL games. Anyone that owned hockey had NHL Stanley Cup, myself Jesus included. Christ. Where where did you grow up? <laughs> well, that's what I'm wondering. Like, were all my, like, was this game cheap? And maybe me and my parents and my <laughs> yeah. families were all poor or cheap or something? Because, like. Well, I think you're, well, what I was going to say, your fucking dad probably bought you this out of NHL 94 just because you're a Habs fan. He's Maybe. Like, Fuck you. you know what? You they might have... piece of shit. Well, no, but Patrick was on the cover. Yes. So maybe it. they thought that. Like, maybe. See, that's the thing is, they, parents, certain parents, my parents were this way, my brother is this way, it's a, it's a worn man thing. We'll hear things and go, yeah, I'll get it. Like, you know, can you pick up a loaf of bread and milk and you come home with bread? Right. Or you, you, like, you, 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 you come home with like the wrong thing. And my dad used to do it all the time. And maybe your parents were like mine in the sense that, like, hey, can you get me that new hockey game? And your dad just went, yep, and just saw it. And there it is. Like, yeah. That's the one he wants. Fuck him. Man, maybe He's that's what that. it is. As I'll tell you, dude, I honestly didn't even know NHL 94, 95, not, until I think NHL 96 was the first one that I rented with any regularity. And before that, I didn't even know those games existed. Like I just, I, well, I, well, where were you? And who? How many friends did you have? Two? Not many. Yeah, <laughs> not many. But like, no, clearly. But NHL Stanley Cup, and that was the one my mom and dad got me. And again, now listen, listen. I just want to say for the record, I'm comparing NHL Stanley Cup to Blades of Steel and ice hockey. And when you oh, play, that's not fair. That's no, 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 no. I'm saying when I was a kid, like when I played it, because like the only other games right. I had okay. played okay. Were, were Stanley okay. Cup and I, were, were, were Blades of Steel and Ice Hockey. And Blades of right. Steel and Ice Hockey didn't have season modes or battery saves or or anything. They didn't even have all the teams. See, though, though, see this is this is the now we're getting into it. Those are the things I'm talking about in the sense of ahead of its time. Absolutely. I was like, Wait, what? Yeah. You could save. Because again, you and I discussed this. We we both talked about how back in the day 
I used to have like I've got a I've got a do a tang in front of me right now that I was making notes in. I can't believe I found one of these in my house. But uh, I was sitting here making notes. But you and I discussed how back in the day I used to write down players' names because number thirty nine in the game would be Doug Wade. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, would just, and I would keep stats of all my season because there was no season mode and there was no stats. So yeah. I used to put it on paper. And like, and I don't know why, because so, uh, it's not like I'm reviewing it. But no, no, I but I, yeah, I, I wrote them down too, though. And I would erase my stats every game and like update them and stuff. And I wrote down all the players' right, names. Exactly. But but yeah, here's the thing: yeah. is like when I look at NHL '94, NHL '94 has the players' names and stuff like that. They had clearly, well, and yeah, I was, they had to the deal team. with the NHLPA. Whereas, how, does, how do you get the team? But not the players. Okay, so I, I read about that. An NHL Stanley Cup had a licensing deal with the National Hockey League, but not with the National Hockey League Players Association. I assume that's not that, important to them? I guess not. Okay, so I assume that they didn't have the, the, the bankroll that EA did to shell out for both licenses. And so when you play NHL Stanley Cup, again, when you compare to those NES games, I was like, wow, it's got all of the official logos like and stuff like that. But then you turn it on, and it has just player numbers. It doesn't have any of the logos on the jerseys. It only has the logos like when you pick your team or like for the scoreboard. But the players' yeah. jerseys are completely blank, both front and back. No numbers, no player logos, just the or no team logos, just the colors. You couldn't yeah, trade now, players. You couldn't edit your lines. Yeah, now we're getting to do it. And I went like, <laughs> and I thought it was so cool. And that's why I started writing NHL '96 all the time because I was like, wait a minute, I can trade players in this one, yeah. and it knows <laughs> the players' names. Like what? I learned so many hockey players' names from playing NHL Stanley Cup because I would look up like, oh, who is number 74 for the Florida Panthers, right? And I'd be like... Wait, you would go get the newspaper? No, I had those. Remember the old NHL guidebooks? Oh, yeah. I used to get those. And then I would flip through and look for all the different players' names and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. You know, you're probably right when it comes to the NHL PA because... Even, even uh, not to get off topic, but the new NHL game, we, we, uh, my brother and I play online against a couple guys, and we do uh, all star teams and like, or all time teams, and we're yeah. like, oh shit, we'll be the Habs and we'll play the Oilers, and whatever. As like, if you ever get a chance to, the rosters are have like seven good players, and then it just goes down the shitter. Yeah, because right. you have to individually sign a contract. We looked into that, so it's it, it's interesting that way, but. Uh, so clearly, money was more than likely an issue, and back then they probably didn't really. They probably just blanketed it in the sense of going to the NHLPA and saying, "Hey, can we use you guys in the game?" Sure, and then they got a big sum of money and they maybe spread it out. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, I don't know how it works, but like, so they they didn't have both, but like, so like we, <laughs> you know what? You we'll do this in re- mode. You had a season mode. That's it. Really good. Dude, there's, so that's what I was going to say. Cause like the tradition dictates on this show that we do the good stuff, then we shit on it. And yeah. so, like, as far as the good stuff goes, I'm telling you, I had never played a game that had a season mode like this before. And I thought that was so rad. It had 84 games and you play, cause that was back when the seasons had 84 games and you yeah. played against every team and you could see all the standings and you could see all of the players stats on your team. Didn't have their names. It just had their goals, assists, their shots on goal Which and their penalty minutes. Because the first NHL games, uh, EA didn't always have the names. Nope, pretty no, pretty positive. The first one did, first and I two maybe. No, I don't think it did either. And I thought that was so rad. Like I really enjoyed that because I had my favorite player, just like everybody did, right? Like playing with yeah. the the Habs from those days. Like I had Vinny. Vinny was my guy, Vinny Damfus. Oh, and so, so it was like number. Oh, fuck you. He's great. And so it was like, no, it I was mean, like, oiler. That's, oh yeah. That's, that's still heartbreaking. And so it was like, get the puck to 25, like always get the puck to 25. And then, and I remember playing with my friends and one of the rules we had was you couldn't pick Pittsburgh and you couldn't pick LA because Gretzky, sense. Gretzky and Lemieux were so JR from NHL 94, like fucking just over yeah. to the max. And the thing about it was like, so that was really cool. And then you would get into the playoffs because it gave you the exhibition mode, which sucked season mode or the best is you could just play a best of seven. Uh, which was also really fun. I remember my friend Sean and I playing so many best of sevens against each other because it was like playing right. for the no, Stanley that's not Cup. A bad mode. It's not a bad mode if you're sitting with buddies and stuff. It's it, it, it's okay. No, absolutely. So I I really like that. I like the fact that it keeps track of your season stats and things like that. The <laughs> this is this is kind of a double edged sword. I don't think the graphics at a glance are awful. 
Okay, well, you just you, you, now, you just the buried more, yourself. No, no, the you more just buried, you, at a glance. No, no, the more the mean? more you like, stare at it, the worse the graphics it? get. Okay. Oh, I get yes, it, yes. but I get what they were trying to do. There was like, this isn't NHL 94 with these little 16 bit digital eyes. You know what I mean? Like they yeah, were like, they, they went big. They did. They, they were like, big here's big game. players. And you see all the details of their socks, their helmets, their gloves. You know what I mean? It was just yeah. like, so I was like, okay, well that's kind of cool. And then it used that graphics. I don't remember the name. I want to say mode seven was the name of the graphics chip. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it was You're in right. like, I remember playing, did you ever play NCAA basketball? Yeah, yeah, that was uh, actually one of the things that I, I saw too. Is I remember playing that game. It was very similar to this, where it was like you're playing and it, it, it's just very different. Same, just, it was just, yeah, yeah, same concept. Yeah, same camera, everything like that. Very. We'll get into gameplay in a minute. Yeah, because I'm pretty confident that this the Mode Seven thing is the same thing they used for like Mario Kart and F Zero. And oh, that wow. stuff was like, wow. And then this was like, before the gameplay starts, like when the camera does the thing where it like zooms into the opening face off and it comes beside, you're like, all yeah. right, this looks pretty rad. Like you I know, can get behind does. this. You're right. I watched, there was an hour video and I got about, uh, well, I, I got about eight minutes in and I said, okay, yeah. that you kids, the more you go, the more you see. That's it. Okay. And that's, and, this is where we get into it. And this is where it starts to get bad. So because that yeah. camera zooms in and oh yeah, and quickly, I just, cause I don't want to forget to call this out. I will forget. One thing that this game did ahead of its time is they put goddamn referees in the game that refused to drop the puck for a face off. Yeah. Just like in today's NHL where God forbid you just drop the puck. It's gotta be 25 seconds of fucking yelling at every player not no, to move. Being is fucking, he's gotta be involved. Ugh. If you hit the button to win the face off before he dropped the puck, he would just do no. the fake drop and like fake, 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 fake. And you're between you and your friend. You're both sitting there like, Hey, Dude, don't touch anything. But neither of you wants to be the one to lose the face off. Fuck no, me. Of Just drop the fucking puck, man. But then once yeah. he would drop the puck, whatever team won the puck, the camera would spin around behind that team's player. And that's where shit started to get bad. Yeah. It, it, so the thing that I, I, I would love to play this game again is what my question to you is, you played this more than I did because a buddy of mine, we played real games. Like Ooh, we could afford... Uh. Yeah, we had NHL 94. We didn't have Brad anyway, Warren money. Yeah, oh yeah. So my key thing is this to you. My question to you is, if you don't have the puck and you're the second guy playing, how does it work? I don't remember the camera. Like the guy coming, like if you're the second player and you don't win the draw and the camera spins to the guy with the puck, I'm, where are you, where's the other guy? I'm 90, 90% sure it was split screen. So top, I think top bottom. Right? Yeah, top bottom. Yeah, I'm ninety percent sure oh, it was split no. screen. That, yeah, and, and again, like that, that just sounds like it. it, it I'll, I'm going to look it up because I need to know how. Yeah, I was looking that, it up right now because I wanted to double check that. I want to see because right. we played a ton of it, and the two options would be split screen or the player without the puck disappears. Because like NHL '94, for example, wasn't split screen. But the no, ice was, was so just, big, you could see half of the rink at any given time. Yeah, yeah. The overhead just worked. It uh, just worked so well. But I like watching this game, and I remember playing it where you're like, like you said, you're like, wow, the puck gets dropped and the camera moves. And you start playing, and it, you, you really start to look at it, and you're like, wow. Oh. Dude, when just, that, dude, because the thing is, is yeah, like, the puck switches yeah. like this. The puck switches hands. Obviously, all I can't find a two-player clip. I can't honestly. I can't remember. But I want to say it was split screen. I'm ninety percent sure it was because there's no other way to play. Well, you can't. Or no, you know what, dude? So actually, no way. I'm looking right now, and I don't think it is split screen. I think what happens is like one whoever has the puck, the camera spins around behind him, and then you can obviously oh, no. see your guy with the puck. And then whoever okay, you're okay. controlling, if you're on the defensive team, whoever you're controlling, there's a big arrow. That's what it was. They have a big arrow over them, and if the big arrow, if you're off screen, then the big arrow is just pointing at which way you were off screen. That's and then all you could do was try to skate back into the view of the fucking guy that had the puck. So if, the, if you and I are 
I'm sorry I'm going on a rant, but it's so fucking stupid. If you and I were playing and I stole the puck from you and took off, the camera spins around, it's behind me, and all that's in front of me is your two defensemen and your goalie, and you're controlling your left winger, all there is is a giant arrow pointing at the left side of the screen telling you, hey, your guy is back there somewhere. But oh, wait, he skates just as fast as I do, so he's probably not going to fucking catch up to me. Like, No, it's horrible. It's fucking shit. terrible. It's and then as the it's puck it's switches control like from one team to the other that camera is like a merry-go-round just spin and spin and spin what the fuck you didn't get sick i don't know either dude like i'm watching a clip of it right now and the graphics and like how shit they were back then and you're playing on a tube tv so it's really bright and shit's just coming at you and and i gotta say like it just only gets worse brutal the one, the, the rotating camera, I think they were just like, you know what? It, it, we got good results out of this basketball game. It's a gamble for hockey, but it, it could work. And no, no, it no. doesn't. The ball doesn't get turned it, over in basketball like it does in hockey. So I have to admit something to you, watching highlights of this game. Because the main thing that I remember is skating around and the camera fucking moving. Yeah. But I was like, there's no crowd. There's no crowd. It's no. just black and it's crap. You see like the scoreboard and everything. Yeah. But when you look at, I, I just realized today that there is crowd. It's above where the scoreboard is. Yeah. So the top half of the screen, that's the other thing is like, I have to assume, cause like I'm thinking None about of it, it makes sense. No, I'm thinking about it now. Like F zero filled the screen, but like super Mario Kart, unless you're playing two player, the top half of the screen was just the map. And like yeah. in this one, the top half of the screen is just the scoreboard with the crowd behind it. But you're right, down below, the players are playing on like a surface of ice with no boards and no audience. No. It's just darkness all the way around them. And it, I, it, the physics is not like I, again. I know it's 90, 1993. right? But yeah, you it, like I know we're not comparing NHL ninety four to this, but holy shit, it, it, it's just. It none of it makes sense. No, I mean it, I have to. Like, I have to assume that the blackness part of it is just so that this, the the game doesn't have to worry about loading up a crowd at all times while it's spinning right, around. Right. And yeah. the other part is so that it's easier to see your players and stuff like that. Well, um, <laughs> but of but it's loading, just that ugly. One of the greatest things that I read about this game is one is that if <laughs> if there was a penalty and a guy went off the ice, Steve, do you remember this? Because people online talking about this game. I don't remember this, but the game would get faster with less people on the ice. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Because it was less stress on the engine of the actual yeah. game. And that- like, I, yeah, I, I don't get, uh, like, in 1993-94, again, we've discussed this, there was no internet. There was no reviews of games. No. There was no, no thought process. You went to the store and you bought it. Yeah. He said, I like the cover of that game. I'm buying it. Yeah. Until Game Pro came out, we knew nothing. We knew nothing. You went in blind. You bought the game. You took it home. You played it. And if it fucking sucked, it sat and collected dust. That's it. You and that's, dude, when you, you, you look at the cover. It, you couldn't do shit. No. And when you look at the cover to this, like the cover is rad because it's 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 oh, Patrick yeah. Waugh in net with his Habs like logo and everything. And the guy shooting on him is clearly Wayne Gretzky. In his yeah. LA gear, because that had been the cup final that year, was the Habs yeah, and, the, no, and the Kings. It, like, the, the cover it, looks it, rad. It has it. <laughs> yeah, but, the box is good. <laughs> the box is great. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, it, but it's like you, you. But that okay. So look. like, I want to. This is where I was saying like part of it. I don't think is like the part that I think is not all bad about the graphics is like because you're right. You I remember that you put a player in the box and then the player would show up in the box on your score like on your side of the scoreboard. And there would be a little clock oh, counting maybe. it down. And I liked so that that's part. that's a camera. Essentially, that's a camera fa- facing the penalty box. Yeah, all at all. Yeah, which, sure. I, which I don't hate. Because you can see the guy in the box. You can see the timer clear his day as to when he's going to get out. Yeah, and then when he would hit zero, he would get out. And like, you'd show him getting out. But like, they do have, when you count the two goalies, they do have 12 pretty big and colorful players moving around at once. And they really did do a, an okay job of trying to get the skating animations and stuff down. Like they don't just, the, their feet aren't just not moving and they're just sliding no, no, around. Like right, they do look right. like they're skating they're and stick handling and stuff. Um, but no, no, okay, but, take that one back. You do not say stick handling. They There's do. No stick handling. They do say. No, there isn't. I, there I, is, look up there a clip is. right I, now. I'll bet you. I did. I'll bet you. I'll awesome. bet you a donut. 
Well, uh, when a guy uh, is skating, it's t- 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 like just the classic back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like you can't make them do anything thing. special. Uh, that's a sound effect. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm bringing it up right now. I'm fucking telling you when a guy is skating, he doesn't just hold okay. the. Yeah. Like you a want at- that one, you got it. You, yeah. You can have it for Stanley Cup. He's now he's, you want to talk about you, the tap, 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 the, the, the music and the sound in this game. It's a fucking nightmare. Oh, it's too... I honestly don't know what... I know there's like that initial, like the song that plays during the intro. And I don't know what I'm going to play for the other two songs on this episode. Well, because I mean, there's not really any other music. I will say this. There, during the game, there is an organ playing. And it's not bad. Wow. So let's see if you can pull that. But yeah, no, the opening music is just atrocious. It is, yeah. And like the thing it's is... Like, it sounded like uh, just a guy had a keyboard and he's just smashing keys yeah and i don't want to like i don't want to just compare this game to nhl 94 because they're two different games but nhl 94 right. had the brass bonanza and all these yeah. like great songs and fucking nhl stanley cup had like that bum 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 yeah, bum yeah, like just yeah. the terrible song it played over and over I and just, fuck it, sorry go ahead no it, it, yeah like but the gameplay noise is like it it just dies oh it's, it's terrible like, there's a swishing noise yeah and then you just see the like i know they don't you know it's more today about collision detection of like people around you but when players would hit each other what the fuck is going on uh, uh, it, would just, uh, uh, it would just yeah, yeah. and then <laughs> sticks would just smash and then a guy would just skate away yeah it's like okay Dude. i guess he won so because i remember like there was three you could you could uh poke check where you lift the yeah. other guy's stick you could hip check where you would just bend over and like it never hit. Or you no. could throw like the giant both elbows fucking right up at the guy's face body check. And if you did it too much, then you would that's when you would start taking penalties. Right. And playing defense was so bad. Oh yeah, and do you I don't know if you remember this or not, but once you had two penalties, they wouldn't call any more penalties on you. Because what? the game couldn't handle it, I guess. Because like in re- for anyone, I guess if you don't know, if you're a casual hockey fan, you can get more than two penalties at a time, but you always have three players on the ice. So if you've got yeah. four guys in the box, then when the first two penalties expire, you still only have three guys on the ice because you got to wait. You know what I like? I hope that makes sense. But in this game, when two guys were in the box, you couldn't get any more penalties. And I remember so you could just hammer guys. you fucking right. That was the penalty kill. Was you just well, hammered exactly. the body check, um, which well, I actually enjoyed. Seventy eight hockey. Is what you yeah, and I actually enjoyed that part because that made it a little bit more arcadey. Um, well, I, that's in the end. That's what they should have just done. With yeah, they should have. They should have just leaned into the arcade thing. So. Well, especially when you knew NHL ninety, like NHL PA ninety three or NHL ninety three, whichever one it's called. It just dominated. Yeah. So it's like you, if you were gonna compete, I think there's a game. There is a game here. There is. There is. Totally there's is. Aspect. There, there's aspect. Yeah. It's just once you got into the gameplay, the longevity of it. I think you even said you're like, how hard was it to try and finish the season? Because it was just like, fuck, this game is. It's just not playable. No, it's it's, it's playable. It's, it's playable, but. It I gets think a boring. Solo, like single player mode? Fuck no. No, it you gets boring. To me, that was part of like, I mean, we were saying how Ice Hockey and Blades of Steel didn't have big season modes, but I think they would have gotten old with big season modes anyway. When you yeah, can't yeah. trade, you can't edit your lines, you can't sign you free agents. Names. You have nothing. You don't have anything in those. Th- then it gets but old. What you had was two controllers and you and a buddy it, just beating the shit out of each other. And, and those games were fun. And dude, this game, it was so fucking hard to score. In this fucking well, game, that's, unless well, you that's did the one thing, thing. I was gonna ask you about it. How do you? I don't remember shooting. Okay, well you could highlight and you could take the big no slappers. Yeah, it's just it's the animation. Just it's lost on me yeah. what they were trying to do. Like you get near a goalie and you hit shoot, and it's like the puck just disappears, and you hear ooh. Yeah, well, and that was the goal, and it's like, well, what? Like, <laughs> you can take those giant slap shots or the wrist shots, but like the goalie animation hardly ever moved. Sometimes he'd go down on his knees, I think. But like the goalies never raised his gloves, never moved. He just would hit him, and then he'd shuffle over and then do whatever with it. And like it was so, unless you were coming straight down the ice where you could pick a corner and try to shoot it into a corner that way, 
Um, or the goalie was completely out because like one timers and stuff didn't exist. So unless the goalie no. was completely out of place, it was so hard. Like we had so many games where it was like zero zero or one but nothing. You were probably sweating as a kid because you're just hammering buttons and you're sitting there. It looks like one of those games where you're working really, really hard and nothing happened. Oh, it was the worst. If somebody scored on you, you were like, fuck me. Cause you were like, there's a pretty good chance. I'm not going to get one back. <laughs> this like it's over. And then, and we'll get into the glitch goal in a minute. Cause I know anyone that ever played this game knows about the glitch goal, but like, well, do you remember that between periods and then after games and stuff, it would always cut to that fat reporter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he would just say the stupidest shit. He'd be like, well, that oh, was, yeah. a, that was a lackluster period between the Montreal Canadians and the Edmonton Oilers. And then he would be like the Montreal Canadiens goalie stopped 23 uh, shots or made 23 saves on 23 shots. But but what it would do is it would say 23 save and then like the, the bracket S bracket, like in case it went plural. But it said it like in the guy's report and he always said the same couple of things. And I watched a YouTube video where a dude won the cup as the Rangers. And he won the final game two to one. And then they go to the reporter after he won the cup. And he's like, it was a quiet night here in the National Hockey League. And it's like, the Rangers just won the cup. What are you talking about? Uh, Why is this scene? Like, I'm all, I think it's great when games, any sports game puts like the news, the reporters. I love that concept. Remember when that first got put in? It was like, wow, it's like TV. Yeah. But it's not. But it's so shitty. Like, oh, yeah. You know what that is? That's because I hate commentary in sporting games to today. Like, right up to today. I fucking, I usually turn the commentary off on my games. Uh, That was, that was Super Nintendo commentary. Yeah. (laughs) It was so awful. That's exactly it. You just sit there and you, you read text. Oh, so awful. And he'd be like, here's the Montreal Canadiens first period stats. And then it would just go to that standard stats screen with the goals, yeah. assists, shots on goal, penalty minutes. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. And I counted them up because I was thinking about it. You only have nine forwards and six defensemen per team. So huh? you only have three lines and then two yeah. power play lines, two penalty kill lines, which you can't change. But like, so everyone that was a fourth liner got cut. But I guess the PA can't complain because they didn't sign off on the game, so they weren't getting paid for it anyway. No, they just said no because they probably, again, it was too many numbers to put in the game. They weren't too even many putting numbers. In it's just text. too many numbers. It's, it's like, just no, text. We can't. Fuck we can't. me, just ridiculous. And well, then, yeah, well, there's no benches. There's nothing. No, there's nothing. You there's can't see the other players. So I don't get why. It, it, it's another one of these games where I think in the end. And you know what? This would be a great 30 for 30 show yeah, in the would. sense where they find these guys where they do like the ET game, like the big games where, and then you throw in like a Stanley cup where, yeah, we did it for a year. And the guy goes, we were on a lot of blow and we fucking ran out of time. Yeah. So that's, we just, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that'd be a great, great TV I, show. I wish this game had gotten a sequel because I feel like there was enough like good here that if they had another year and some more money, maybe. Well, here's the thing is like, I, I, like I said to you, it, it, it's it, it, probably in a future podcast, but I don't remember a lot of them. There was like seven NHL games by the time 96, 97 came out. Yeah, there was like, a lot. When we break away, there's Blades of Steel 99. I don't remember that. Wayne Gretzky's uh, 3D Hockey. Brett Hall dude. Hockey 95. You know what's funny, dude? I had NHL Stanley Cup, Brett Hall Hockey 95, Wayne Gretzky's 3D Hockey, I didn't own a good hockey game until I bought my own with my PlayStation and I bought like NHL 99 or something. PlayStation? Yeah. You missed it. Like, wow, your childhood kind of I sucked. used to, yeah, I did. I used to rent, like, again, NHL 96, 97. I'd rent them over and over again, but I never owned so any So you would them. rent them, but you wouldn't buy them? You wouldn't tell your what folks the fuck? to get you it? No, you know, oh no, we didn't all have that kind of Brad Ward money where we could just go to our parents oh, and be I'm like, please buy Christmas, me a game. Man. And the thing is, is what I did want a new game, like for Christmas, I'd cash it in on like a Mario game or something. I'd oh, fucking make fuck. it count. Not hockey. I'd go outside. That's what I fucking did. I wouldn't like you. I oh, went outside. There it is. <laughs> there's, there's the ace in the hole that everybody always plays. <laughs> I played video games as a kid. Oh, yeah. I went outside. I went outside and played street yeah, hockey, you fuck fucking you, loser. You, you anyway. fucking douche. So, okay, we gotta, we're right out of time. But there's one more thing I really want to cover on this shitty game. The if you, I guess if you've never played it, if you've never played it, you probably skipped this episode. But if you're a loyalist who listens to every episode, whether you've played the game or not, first of all, thank you. You're awesome. There was a glitch in this game 
where you could, so like, I want to say, I don't remember the exact controls, but you had the four buttons, one passed, one took a wrist shot, one took a slap shot, and one dumped the puck. I think it was X. And there was a glitch where if you would come straight on at the other team's net and right around the blue line hit the dump, it would go straight up in the air and drop in over the goalie's head under the crossbar every time. Every time. The goalie couldn't stop it. It was impossible. I'm just going to say this right now. This ended friendships. Oh, I totally did. My friends and I... I'm not saying many, but there are cases where if you talk to somebody... In if you if you pulled people who played this game, it started minimum fight. Oh, like totally, punching, yeah. Like guys yeah. beat the shit out of each other. My, my friend like Sean and I, busted. It, my buddy it Sean and I played this. Thing, it was garbage. It was garbage. But here's the thing, too. And again, how did we figure that out? I have no idea. Like and I it's have one no of those idea. Things where you heard something from somebody saying, "Oh yeah, there's a cheap cheap goal in that." Yeah. We had no internet. We had no magazines. It just was something that somebody it, did one day, and they're like, uh, I, I, "What the fuck?" Oh yeah, it's even on. You're not dumping it out in this no. game. You're not playing like the only time not, you would use that it's dump. Not the hockey game now, where you're dumping it out, going, "Oh man, the pressure's on." No, you're not doing that. No, the only time you use the dump button in this game, other than to score that shitty goal, was maybe penalty killing. Maybe, maybe. Did it even register for that? Well, yeah, because like, it would work? go right up in the air. It was like the the Dwayne Robertson. I bet you that play from Mighty Ducks two with Dwayne Robertson is is uh, based on the NHL Stanley Cup. No, I'm it's not like, but it's it the perfect kind of teamwork thing. play, and it's just straight up in the air and down. My buddy Sean and I played this game against each other so much, and our one rule it was that it was rule right off the get no no dump shot like that was just because it was like that's just garbage. And if one of yeah, us but did you it, would do it. But if you one, would do it. Yeah, we would totally. But then every time one of us did it, the other one was allowed one back. To fucking even it up. It was ridiculous. Like, you'd be better off just playing with the goalies pulled than fucking doing that stupid... And listen, like, I'm not... Listen, like, obviously NHL 94 is the better game. Those NHL games, fucking, when you were going to the bottom net, down the wing, let oh, her go from the boards has, at the top of the circle. Every, every hockey game, game has one. it. Okay? Like, the hardest thing in all of sporting video games might be creating a competent, fair goalie. Like... That yeah, might it, be. It, they still can't get it right. They still can't. It's got to be a hard thing to do. But this game, it was like, you would get so fucking angry because you'd take 50 shots. None of them would go in. You'd hit a dozen posts. I had so many fucking posts in this game. You did like 40, oh, yeah. like you'd hit, you did 30 posts on 50 shots with zero goals. And then finally you'd be like, fine and fucking just chip it over. Or like you're playing it by yourself on your season mode and you're like, no dump goals. I want to play it fair and square. But then you're really close to losing a game to a team you hate. You're like, well, all right. And you'd resort well, to like one dump goal. One. I need one. But yeah, I don't understand one. how they didn't catch Let that and test it. Let me tie it, and then we'll go from there. Everybody knew about it. I'm on their Wikipedia page, and the last paragraph of one of the chapters, the player on offense could exploit a tactic of dumping the puck over the goalie's head, thereby creating an indefensible shot. So everybody fucking knew about it. I don't understand. And you couldn't patch games back in 1993 to fix this, so I don't understand how it got through playtesting, where they were just they were maybe just like, ah, nobody will notice. It was just like on WCW NWO Revenge. If you flick the joystick, you kicked out every time. Yeah. And so the rule was you couldn't do it, but then you'd every time you'd pin one of your buddies, you'd fucking watch his hand to make sure he didn't touch that fucking joystick. Yeah, and then he's like, no, I fucking hit the button. Yeah. No, you didn't. You lying. I just beat the shit out of you and hit two finishers. There's a kid Fuck right you. now. There's a kid right now listening to this game that constant, listening to this episode that constantly exploited the dump goal that flicked the joystick to kick out of wrestling pins and that always picked odd job in golden eye. And that kid's a yeah, fucking and, loser. And, and, and he loves AEW wrestling. Okay. No, no, don't, that's, you don't be that guy. Well, I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's their, that's their people. This game like is dead. This game is like everyone that's ever been into a retro video game store has seen this game sitting in like that 50 cent bin that nobody yeah. ever buys. But everyone I knew owned this game as a kid. I, this game, I bet you this game sold a lot of copies. I bet you well, this game sold did, a lot. I think it did well because I think everybody played it. I didn't own it because I because you were rich before. Yeah, you're rich. I had a Genesis for one, so that that's that's the key there. Well, that explains a lot. Well, we've discussed that before, but uh-huh. no. It, 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 in the in the end, there, there there is positives, but the negatives outweigh it. 
You know what? I would like to know if NHL 90, say the NHL series had never existed. NHL 94, no. NHL 95, NHL 93, none of those games existed. I want to know if people would hate this. Like if this game would be as shitty, like remembered as shittily as it is. Well, the, we don't know Brett Hall hockey. I do. I own Brett Hall hockey and I promise oh, this game is way better than Brett Hall hockey. Way really? better. Way better. I don't better. know. Brett I Hall hockey fucking sucked. But they were both shit. That's at the end of the day. They were both guys. I'm, I'm like, I, dude, when you and I started talking about covering NHL Stanley Cup, I was like, I know, I'm like, I don't know if I want to do this like weird game that chances are most people didn't play. But then at the same time, I'm like, you know what? I played it and I have good memories and bad memories of it. And you know what? Now that we've talked about it, it never has to be mentioned on the show again. It probably won't ever be mentioned on the show again. No, it, 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 it's not one of those games where I would say it's, or like it's an abomination to the sport of hockey. Like it's, no, it's, it's not, not that bad. No, it's not. But, but like it's just not. It's not fucking good. No, <laughs> and you know what works against it is so many retro sport games are beloved all these years later. Like people still like ice hockey. They still like Blades of Steel. NHL ninety four. There's still tournaments. There's like an active competitive scene with NHL ninety four. People still love Tecmo Bowl. People still play Ken Griffey Junior Major League Baseball. Like there's yep. so many classic sports. NBA Jam, obviously. Like there's so many classic sports games that people still know and love that the bad ones really get exposed because it's like we have good ones that still play well today. Do you know what I mean? And NHL Stanley Which is crazy. Cup Absolutely, Which is it is crazy. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of people that would prefer to play NHL 94 to NHL 20, like the current NHL game. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah, 100. percent Whereas NHL Stanley Cup, that's where I think that is one of the reasons it takes so much shit and people like look down on it is because it's just so many games from that era aged perfectly. And this one, as a, I can't even imagine trying to play this today with that fucking camera. I don't think I could. No, I, I, I doubt we would get through more than one game. No, it'd be so I just, bad. I just think it would. It's too, I get what they were trying to do, what they wanted to do. They wanted to be different. They, they had an engine that they thought they could transfer over. It was a big gamble. And again, they lost. Yeah. I feel like they were trying to go simulation and it just didn't work. That's yeah, the problem. 100%. But, but it also has the Florida Panthers and the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. And that's fucking rad because I love that Mighty Ducks logo so much. God, well, I I, I, again, you got the logos, you got the players' numbers. They played like the players they were supposed to be. It, it's yeah. not that bad. Yeah. It, it, it's <laughs> rid, like that, that part of it is not that bad. But again, you don't have jerseys. You no. don't have the numbers on the back. You don't, but you I don't have a lot, but. Yeah. Uh, like I'm looking at back to, like I'm looking at a still of NHL Stanley Cup versus a still of NHL 94 and I'm just like dude one of these just looks more fun than the other one like you forget yeah. all the others like forget all the little details like NHL 94 just looks fun NHL yeah. Stanley Cup just ah fuck anyway. and you're like what the, what what the fuck happened there this shit it's, it's, um it's, yeah. All right. Well, let's let's finish this thing. So it's NHL Stanley Cup. It released in 1993. So on a scale of one to 93, what would you score NHL Stanley Cup? Out of 93. Out of 93. Shit. I'll give it a 50. That's what I was gonna say. Okay. Then just to change it up, I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a 60 because I have a lot of great memories yeah. of getting angry at it. Like, I do have memories of this game. And that intro, dude, when I watched that intro on YouTube, like, I got, oh, man. And then, oh, fuck. Sorry, we're going to end this, you guys, I promise. But every time somebody would score, they would just show the goalie, like, swatting the puck out of the net like he's angry. And then every time a team won, they would just slide along. Like, it looked like they were just sitting on the bench sliding with their hands in the air. And then when you won the Stanley Cup, it was the exact same celebration, but with the cup in your hands. And it looked so stupid. And you never saw more than one player at a time. Like, it was never a team shot or all the players or anything. And they never showed the players celebrated the goals or any. Ah, fuck. No. What? They, a, okay, in, yeah. In, in NHL 94, they... They skated around with the cup. What a piece of crap. Oh, well. I'm glad we covered it. It never has to be mentioned on the show again. Um, Brad, thanks for doing this, buddy. That was fun. Hey, man. Thank you. And you know what? Thanks for supplying people with stuff to listen to during this weird time. You, As always, you're doing a great job, pal. Thanks, buddy. We'll cover a good game next time. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> All right.
That's going to do it for this week's episode. Brad, thank you so much for giving me a call and talking NHL Stanley Cup with me and making fun of me for being poor and we should go outside and play and do all that fun stuff. And to every single one of you, thank you so much for supporting the show. Next week, it is the big 1-0-0. I very rarely reveal the game in advance, but as I've mentioned a few times, we are going to be talking Halo 2 for episode 100. I'm really excited to get into it. We're also giving away a Switch Lite in time for episode 100. So you've got a few days left. June 8th is the deadline. Either sign up over at patreon.com slash remember the game for two bucks and get a whole bunch of stuff and an entry into the draw or shoot me an email at member the game at gmail.com it is in the description box below with the answer to the trivia question what is my favorite game of all time hint it is the only game to get a perfect 10 here on remember the game and if you need another hint i'm going to be playing a sound cue from it in about five seconds thanks for listening you guys i really appreciate it i'll be back on sunday with episode 10 of expansion pass and i'll be back on wednesday with episode 100 of remember the game stay safe wash your hands clean your controllers look out for giant bees be nice to each other and i'll talk to you again in a few days cheers (laughs) 